morning. Just priming my oven. Boiling my water.
My water is almost at boiling point. I start baking soon. My oven's at 380 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to turn the flame down now. Turn it down to a medium flame. Right in the center of the dial. Hola, welcome to the stream, baking bagels, and my first batch in water, get my boards wet. So the bagels don't stick and so they don't burn in the oven.
So I'm not very talkative this morning. Feel free to make comments, ask questions, pertaining to bagels or literature, perhaps. Whatever interests you, you may ask, and I will answer. There are years that ask questions, and there are years that answer. chance to know things, so she had to ask. Did marriage end the cosmic loneliness of the unmated? Did marriage compel love like sun in the day? You see me pinch the bagels in the water, that's, uh, I'm just testing them to see whether or not they've, they're cooked all the way through. You don't want to have any, you don't want to have a frozen center. So that's what I'm doing when I'm flipping the bagels in the water. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Baking Montreal-style bagels. Broadcasting live from North Vancouver, British Columbia, in the corner of Lonsdale and 17th, across from Starbucks and City Market, and in Esso. Be a fine day here in North Vancouver. We got clear skies, a beautiful sunrise. The sun is just popping its head over the crest of those mountains over there. Mount Seymour. I can see Mount Seymour in the distance. I think that's Mount Seymour. I can't see much of Mount Seymour. First batch in the oven. 
sesame seed, 30 sesame seed bagels. And I'm gonna wait for the water to boil again and I'll add my next batch. Don't want to add the bagels too soon, otherwise uh, you got to give them enough time to these bagels in the oven. So, sort of pacing, pacing myself here. Don't want a runaway oven. What do you want to boil? Don't want to cause a traffic jam. I recite a poem it's by Robert Browning. I know many of you have watched the stream before. Uh, you've probably seen me do this before, but uh, something I do, it's a little ritual I have in the morning. And this is the entire poem. It's a poem that was written probably more than 150 years ago. It's by a Victorian poet named Robert Browning. It's one of my favorites one of my favorite eras of poetic revelation. The Victorian age. Anyways, here it goes. Hamlin Towns in Brunswick, my famous Hanover City. The river Wester, deep and wide, washes its wall on the southern side. A pleasanter spot you never spy. But when begins my ditty, almost five hundred years ago, to see the townsfolk suffer so from vermin was a pity. Rats, they fought the dogs and killed the cats, and bit the babies in the cradles, and ate the cheese and the bags, and licked the soup from the cups and ladles. Put open the keg to salt the sprouts, made nests and then Sunday hats, and even spoiled the women's chats. My drowning out there speaking was shrieking and speaking, and different sharp and flat. At last, the people in a body to the town hall came flocking. Tis clear, cried they, out of there is a naughty. And as for our corporation, shocking to think we lie down as a line with vermin. For adults who can't or won't determine what's best to rid us of our vermin. You hope because you're old and obese to find in the furry civic world's ease. Rouse up, sirs, give your brains a racking. Find the remedy we are lacking. We're sure as fate will send you packing. At this merry corporation creep to the mighty consternation. An hour they sat in council. At length the mayor broke silence. For a gilder I my ermine gown sell. I wish I were a mile hence. It's easy to bid one rack one's brain. I'm sure my poor head aches again. I scratch it so, but all in vain. Oh, for a trap, a trap, a trap. Just as he said this, what should happen? At the chamber door, but a gentle tap. 
Bless us, cried the mayor, what's that? With the corporation as he sat, looking little through wonder is fat. Nor brighter were his eyes, nor moister than a too long opened oyster, save when at noon his paunch grew mutinous, for a plate of turtle green and glutinous, only a scraping of shoes on a mat, anything like the sound of a rat makes my heart go into pat. Come in, cried the mayor, looking bigger, and in did come the strangest figure. His long queer coat from heel to head was half yellow and half red, and he himself was tall and thin, with sharp blue eyes and each like a pin, and light loose hair and swarthy skin, nor tuft of hair on cheek nor beard on chin, but lips where smile went out and in. There was no guessing his kith or kin, and nobody could enough admire this tall man in his quaint attire. Quoth one, it's as my great-grandsire, starting up at the trump of doom's tone, had walked this way from his painted tombstone. He advanced towards the council table, and please, your honor, said he, I am able, by means of secret charm, to draw all the creatures living beneath the sun, the crawl or swim or fly or run, after me so as you never saw. And I chiefly use my charm on creatures that do people harm, the mole and toad and newt and viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. And here they notice round his neck a scarf of red and yellow stripe to match his coat of self-same check, and that scarf's end hung a pipe. And his fingers they notice were ever straying, as if impatient to be playing upon this pipe, as low it dangled over his vesture so old fangled. Yes, said he, Pied Piper as I am, in Tartari I fret the cam, last the sweet swarms of gnats. I ease in Asia the Nizam of a monstrous brood of vampire bats. And as for what your brain bewilders, if I rid your town of rats, will you give me one thousand guilders? One fifty thousand was the exclamation of an astonished mayor and corporation. Into the street the piper stepped, smiling first with a little smile, as if he knew what magic slept in his quiet life. Like a musical and deck to blow his pipe, his lips he wrinkled, and green and blue his sharp eyes twinkled, like a candle flame where salt is sprinkled, and ere three shrill notes the pipe uttered, he heard as if an army muttered, and a muttering grew to a grumbling, and a grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses came the rats tumbling, great rats, small rats, bean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, tawny rats, gray old plotters, gay young friskers, fathers, mothers, uncles, cousins, cocking tails and pricking whiskers, families by tens and dozens, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, followed the Pied Piper for their lives. From street to street he piped advancing, and step for step they followed dancing, until they came to the river rupture, where it all plunged and perished, save one who stout as Julius Caesar, swam across and lived to carry, as he the manuscript he cherished, to rat land home his commentary. Which was, at first shrill notes of the pipe, I heard a sound as of scraping tripe, and putting apples wondrous ripe into the cider presses bright, and it seemed, and a moving away of pickle tub boards, and leaving a jar of conserved cupboards, and a drawing the corks of train oil flats, and a breaking of hoops of butter casks, and it seemed as if a voice sweeter far than by harp or by salary as greed, called out, O oh, rats, rejoice, the world has grown to a vast and sultry. So munch on, crunch on, take the lunch on, breakfast, supper, dinner, lunch on, and just the bulky sugar punch on, already staved like a great sun shone. Gracious, scarce an inch before me, just me thought it said, come for me, I found the west a-ruling over me. You should have heard the Hamlin people ring the bells till they brought the steeple. Go, cried the mayor, get long poles, poke out the nests and walk up the holes, consult with carpenters and builders, and leave in our town not even a trace of the rats, when suddenly up the face of the piper perked in the marketplace. The first he please, my thousand guilders. A thousand guilders, the mayor looked blue, so did the corporation too, for council dinners may wear havoc, with claret, moselle, vin, and grub, hawk, and half the money would replenish, the seller's big blood of Rhenish. He paid this sum to a wandering fellow, a gypsy coat of red and yellow, Besides, quoth the mayor with annoying wink, our business was done at the river's brink. We saw with her eyes a vermin sink, and what's dead can't come to life, I think. But friend, we're not folks to drink from our duty of giving you something to drink, and a matter of money put in your poke. But as for the gilders, what we spoke of them, as you well know, was a joke. Besides, our losses have made us thrifty. A thousand gilders, come, take fifty. 
Piper's face thou need cry, no trifling, I can't wait beside. I promise to visit by dinner time Baghdad, and accept the prime of the head cook's potage. All he's rich in, for having left in the caliph's kitchen, of a nest of scorpions no survivor. With him I prove no bargain driver, but you don't think I'll bait his stiver. And folks who put me in a passion may find me pipe after another fashion. How, cried the mayor, do you think I broke, being worse treated than a cook, insulted by a rival with idle pipe and vesture pile? Threaten us, fellow, do your worst, and blow your pipe there till you burst. Once more he stepped into the street, and to his lips again laid his long pipe with smooth straight cane, and there he blew three notes, such sweet, soft notes as yet musicians cunning never gave me in raptured air. There was a rustling, it seemed like a bustling, of merry crowds jostling and pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping, and little tongues chattering, and like foals in the farmyard when barley is scattering, up came the children running, all the little boys and girls, with rosy cheeks and flax and curls, and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls, tripping and skipping ran merrily after, the wonderful music was shouting and laughter. The mayor was dumb and the council stood, as if they were changing the blocks of wood, unable to move a step of pride, to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with an eye, like joyous crowd the piper's back, and how the mayor was on the rack, and the wretched council's bosoms beat, as the piper turned from the high street, to where the west had rolled its waters, right in the way of their sons and daughters. He never can cross the mighty top, he's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. When lo, they reach the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. The piper advanced and the children followed, and when all were into the very last, the door in the mountainside had shut fast. Did I say all? No, one was lame, and could not dance the whole of the way. And in after years, if you would blame his sadness, he was used to say, it is dull in our town since my playmates left. I can't forget that I'm a ref of all the pleasant sights they see, which the piper also promised me. Before he led us, he said to a joyous land, joining the town in jest at hand, where waters gushed and fruit trees grew, the flowers before the fair view, and everything was strange and new. The sparrow was bright as a peacock here, and their dogs outran our fellow deer, and honeybees had lost their stings, and horses were born with eagles' wings. And just as I became assured, my lame foot be speedily cured, the music stopped and I stood still, and found myself outside the hill, left behind against my will, to go now limping as before, and never hear of that country more. Alas, alas, for Hamelin, there came to many a burgess pate, a text which says at heaven's gate, opes the rich as easy rate, as the needle's eye takes the The mayor sent east, west, north, and south, to offer the paper by word of mouth, wherever was men's lot to find me, silver and gold to his heart's content, if only he'd return the way he went and bring the children behind him. For when they saw it was lost endeavor, the piper and dance were gone forever. They made a decree the lawyers never should think their records dated duly, if after the day of the month and year, these words do not as well appear. And so long after what happened here on the 22nd of July, 1376, and the better in memory to fix the place of the children's last retreat, they call it the Pied Piper Street where anyone playing Piper Tabor was sure for his future to lose his labor, nor suffered the hostile or tavern to shock with words the street so solemn. And opposite the place of the cavern, they wrote the story on a column, and on great church window painted, the same to make the world acquainted how their children were stolen away, and there it stands this very day. And I must not omit to say that in Transylvania there is a tribe of alien people who ascribe the way and dress of which their neighbors lay such stress to their fathers and mothers having risen out of some subterranean prison long time into which they were Japan long time ago in a mighty band out of Hamlin towns in Brunswick land but how or why they don't understand so Willie let me and you be wipers of scores out with old men especially pipers and whether they pipe us free from rats or from mice, if we promise them aught, let us keep our promise. Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning. Robert Browning. Robert Browning.
oven is really hot. You hear the seed snapping in the oven. That means it's hot. My first thought was he lied in every word, that hoary cripple with malicious eye, askance to watch the working of his lie on mine, and mouth scarce able to afford suppression of the greed that first scored its edge at one more victim being thereby. What else should he be set for with his staff? What save to waylay with his lies and snare all the travelers who might find him posted there? And ask the road, I guess what skull like lap would break? What crutch can write my epitaph for pastime in the dust of thoroughfare? If at his counsel I should turn aside into ominous tract which all agree hides the dark tower, yet acquiescently I did turn as he pointed. Neither pride nor hope rekindling at the end is strive, so much as gladness some end might be. For what with my whole world wide wondering, what with my search drawn out through years, my hope dwindled into a ghost not fit to cope with that obstreperous joy success would bring. I hardly tried now to repute the spring my heart made finding failure in its scope. As a sick man very near to death seems dead indeed, Feels begin and end the tears, and takes the farewell of each friend, and hears one bid the other go, draw breath, reelier outside, since all is over, he saith, and the blow fallen no grieving can amend. While some disgust near other graves be ruined after this, and when a day suits best for carrying the corpse away, with care about banners, scarfs, and staves, and still the man hears all and only craves, he may not shame such tender love and stay. Thus I had for so long suffered in this quest, heard failure prophesied so oft being writ, so many times among the band to wit, the knights who to dark tower search address their steps, the just to fail as they seem best, and all doubt was now should I be fit. So quiet as despair I turned from them, that hateful cripple, out of his highway into the path he pointed, all the day it being a dreary one at best, and dim and suddenly into its close, Yet shot one grim red leer to see the plain catch its astray. For Mark, no sooner was I fairly found, pledged to the plain after a pace or two, than pausing to throw backward a last view, over the safe road twas gone, gray plain all round, nothing but plain to the horizon's brown. I must go on, naught else remain to do. So on I went. I think I never saw such starved ignoble nature, nothing throve. For flowers as well expect a cedar grove, but chortle and spurge according to their law, might propagate their kind with none to awe. You'd think of her had been a treasure trove. No penury, inertness, and grimace, in some strange sort were the land's portion. See or close your eyes, said nature peevishly. In nothing skills, I can't help my case. Tis last judgment's fire must cure this place, calcine its clods, and set my prisoners free. If there pushed any ragged thistle stalk above its mate, its head was chalk, the bents were jealous else. What made the holes and rents in the dock's harsh shores bleed, bruised as to walk full hope of greenness, tis a brute must walk, crashing their life out with a brute's intense. As for the grass, it grew as scarce as hair in leprosy, thin dry blade, blade, blades pricked the mud, which underneath the Look kneaded up with blood. One stiff blind horse, his every bone a stare, stood stupefied however he came there, thrust out past service from the devil's stud. Alive, he might be dead for aught I know, with red gaunt and callop neck astrain, and shut eyes beneath the rusty mane. Seldom went such grotesqueness with such woe. I never saw a brute I hated so. He must have been wicked to deserve such pain. I shut my eyes and turned them on my heart, as a man asked for wine before he fights, 
I asked for one draft of earlier, happier sights, ere fitly I could hope to play the part. Think first, fight afterwards, the soldier's art. One taste of old time sets all to rights. Not it. I fancied Cuthbert's reddening face beneath its garniture of curly gold. Dear fellow, till I almost felt him fold. An arm and mind to fix me to that place, that way he used. Alas, one night's disgrace, out went my heart's new fire and left it cold. The child's then, the soul of honor, there he stands. Frank is ten years ago when knighted first. An honest man should say, a modest man should say. That's far as I can go with that one, I'm sorry. Well, I memorized up to like 28 stanzas, I guess. Welcome to the stream. I'm Bacon Bagels. My name's Steve. N. Steve N. Or Steve, I don't care. Ah. These are ready. I can take them up now. No one at one. One of the hazards of my job is that uh, my nose gets really dry because I'm breathing in hot oven air all day. I'm a banker. This is my job, surprise, if you're if you're wondering. <laughs> I'm actually doing my job right now.
I know most of the anthem. I don't know. It's not. It's been a long time since I've actually been in a, uh, a specific, specific occasion where I need to sing it or whatever. I know most of it. It's it's somewhere up there. I just need to. I just need to refresh it. I know most of it. I know the. I know the gist. whistle it.
tell me not go. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for watching the stream. It's a quiet morning here on Lawnsdale. Not many people out yet. It's still early, 5.30 though. The day has just begun for many. My day started two and a half hours ago. I'm not even close to being finished. pleasure first, and then excuse from pain, and then those little anodynes that deaden suffering, and then to go to sleep, and then if it should be the will of its inquisitor, the liberty to die.
the coke at, bro?
Hello. Welcome to the stream. Merry Christmas. machines. Well, this is an oven. This is a pot on a burner. And I am a baker. You burn bodies. Uh, no, I bake bagels. I do not burn bodies in this oven. sure I understand your question. It might be a rhetorical question. You've never watched it out at all? It's not a common occurrence in the wild, I guess. In some part. places that bake bagels like we do. There's, uh, I know there's a place in Seattle called Altana that does it similar, uh, similarly to us. And, um, and then there's, the, there's Montreal, like the original Montreal bagel places like uh, St. Viator and uh, Fairmont, I guess the other one, I don't know. I've never been to Montreal, so I don't know the offer. And there's a few places in uh, New York uh, that I would really like to visit. There's a place called Black Seed, Black Seed Bagels. for pizzas, I think. Uh, we put uh, cream cheese and uh, we have a Montreal smoked meat, turkey, eggs. I'm a vegetarian though, so I, eat, I like to, uh, and I don't eat dairy, so I, um, I usually put uh, hummus on my bagels or nut butter. Most people who come in here, uh, they'll usually order a breakfast sandwich, which has egg and, uh, yes, nut butter. Good old nut butter. Yeah, I like avocados. 
I'm a vegetarian, so uh, yeah, like I said, I uh, try to eat a lot of vegetables. Haha, <laughs> nut butter. Oh, there's the sun right in my eye. Oh my god. They call him. Sorry, miss. Miss, uh, I'm not part of this conversation. Apparently. Right in my eyes. What age are your bagels? I don't know. Bagels don't have an age. All you need to know is they're nearing their final hours of existence. My age is? I'm not going to tell you my age. Can we Snapchat up cute? Yeah, I, uh, I am on Snapchat. I, don't, I never use it though. Uh, I don't, uh, I think, I think my Snapchat is named Morning Express or, uh, uh Morning Excellence, sorry, Morning Express. Do you even know the name of my show? It's not a real show, it's just a periscope show. But my BB. Look, I need covers on these windows. My God, I can't see a thing. 